There are distressing reports being told by repatriated children who managed to escape from major urban centers such as Kampala, Mbale and Nairobi within Napak district's Karamoja subregions. So when the cows were stolen, it was a challenge. The child started uh, crying, the child would cry, crying for milk, what? So she told the uh, what? She told the sister to the child that maybe you do what? You take the, 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 the child to look for something to eat. So I think the daughter and this is the child to the one who took the child. So after Ash Wednesday, she received a call that the child has what? Has disappeared. Sister went with the child to beg in Kampala. I think they went to buy some other things. So on the process of coming back, when it was now time to board? The bus? Yes. They got that what? They found out that the child was lost. Some families have revealed that their children have been unaccounted for, ranging from 2 to over 10 years. In fact, there are reports of over 30 children missing from the suites of Kampala, where they had been forced into begging. She's a girl child and she was 4 years old. It is now 11 years. They stayed there like for three years looking for the child up to now. So she just decided to come back of recent when it was time for culture. How long has it taken when the child is missing? Said nine years. So according to him, like now this is that he has brought here. In the first place, the government will respond to look for the children. And if the children are brought back by the government to the to their villages, to their families. The government also should have extra effort, maybe to do something that can sustain the children from their families so that they don't go back where they were. And also those who are in school, maybe the government should support them. Maybe when they come for holidays, at least the government maybe should be having some project that can sustain the children. <coughs> Cecilia Moru, a resident of Kailikong village, shares the heart-rending story of her granddaughter, who vanished from Kampala's streets two years ago. Taken to beg by her biological mother, Longole Maria, was eventually returned to her grandparents' care, while her mother continued searching for her elder sister. They, they were alone on the street with the sibling. The mother had they sent them with some other lady and beg. So as they were seated eh, along the street, the child disappeared and it was in the night. So they tried to look for the girl, but the child disappeared. So they had to call their mother. And then the mother came. They, they, were they tried looking for the child and they failed to get the child. So they had to take her back home. There are distressing accounts from families who have lost children reveal a troubling pattern. Many victims are deceived by their own parents, relatives, friends or guardians who promise to send money home but exploit them in street peg. She and a Napak District Resident a District Commissioner, Dennis Okori, emphasize how parents and guardians often benefit from child trafficking. Money for these children <coughs> in the streets. They are the ones aiding the children stay on the streets. They are the ones benefiting from this. We have evidences of parents receiving money on a monthly basis of the children. Controlled by um, adult people who position them in different uh, streets of Kampala. So we don't have to think that these children go freely to Kampala, particularly the smaller one. They are uh, um, kind of forced by family or taken by people who deceive family and that they are going to have a better life in Kampala. Agents have been recruited to act on their behalf. Now you have someone owning 40 children in Kampala because they have an agent in Napak who is moving to a village and enticing children, parents, to give them their children for them to take to Kampala Street. 
2021, around 3,500 children from the districts were identified on the streets of Kampala, a number that appears to have risen since then. Despite the government's efforts and collaboration with partners to reintegrate these children into their families, many end up returning to the streets, often facing community stigmatization. NGOs which are rescuing one child for the fourth time, and you feel these statistics is not good. Fall up, constant fall up, because the support we get from partners is like a one-off, where you press and resettle, but then you do not have that kind of support to do constant fall up, to see whether the children are still there or they have gone. It's possible that the ones that are returned from the streets may not get back to the streets within Uganda, but they start to get outside the country. Is that this recycling? It is a, addressing a symptom, but it's not addressing the root of problem of the issues of child trafficking. Underlying this troubling issue are pervasive poverty and hunger in the region. Many affected children come from Napak District's Karamoja sub-region, particularly from Matani, Lokopo and Lopei sub-counties. Does he refuse to give them food? That's why you see all the violence. Every year, our women and us participate in agriculture, but we we'll get nothing. So it is on that lack of access to schools, education, broken family. Someone owning 40 children in Kampala because they have an agent in a park who is moving to a village and enticing children, parents, to give them their children for them to take to Kampala. While some children, like 13-year-old Joy Rose Lolebo and 10-year-old Martin Lowanyang, have been successfully reunited with their families and are attending school, others continue to face dire circumstances. <laughs> It's the time you find the, it is a challenge, they want to escape, they're fighting, they don't want to be in class. But as the time goes on, we keep talking to them one by one, giving them a future and hope. Six-year-old Esetha Nachiru is attending school, yet her parents remain elusive. The creation process, we failed to get where to place the girl. We looked for the relatives in all of the people who not get. Even we took the photos to the village, different villages, no one recognized the, the photo. The children's journey from Karamoja to Kampala is fraught with challenges and vulnerabilities. They hold dreams for a brighter future. What do you want to be in the future? Always tell them to study so that tomorrow we are going to be the people coming back here in Karamoja to help these other children, these other parents who have not yet known the best of their schools and the best of education. Children reintegrated in society after enduring street life share a harrowing experience. <laughs> Sexual workers, but not only some are impregnated and the children are given away, horrible things that they share with us. Sister Fernanda Christianelli coordinates the women's desk at Moroto Diocese, playing a vital role in rescuing street children in Kampala. After we have identified them, we take the children back, we really follow them up for a period of two years so that we make sure that the children have not gone back. Efforts to combat child trafficking are underway, although stakeholders partially blame parents for failing to protect their children. Officials from Napak district, along with partners, diligently work to eradicate this reprehensible practice, although challenges persist, including perceived inadequacies in punishments for trafficking. The, the NGOs can come on board and they give us parasocial workers support them with facilitation, transport, airtime, to make sure that they coordinate 
the child's well-being in the community. They go and give psychosocial support to the children. Radical action. Should any mother or your parents fall, leave their child going to Kampala. It's, it's about mapping. That's all it can be. You, you can arrest that one, prosecute, and the rest can learn a lesson from there. States that if a child is brought back from the streets and we trace the family, then we should be able to bring the parents to book. Addressing this grave involves tackling the legal aspects of child trafficking and bolstering household income alongside providing quality education for all children. This a multifaceted strategy aims to secure a future free from the clutches of child trafficking. We, we, we managed to, uh, to arrest seven, uh, five women and two men were intercepted and all of them are in prison. The sentences that we have currently, six months, for people who are got, 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 got yes. guilty, six months, which we feel is uh, not adequate enough for someone to transform and to get knowledge. If their, their parents are, are supported economically, they should be able to do some work. And when these children come back from home, because they are used to begging there, they should be able to enter integrated in this family kind of business and they should be able to get occupied. And that situation is further complicated by children trafficked to Nairobi, Kenya, where they endure unimaginable hardships. Collaborative efforts between the government and concerned stakeholders are crucial to implementing lasting solutions, ensuring the well-being and future of Napak's children. Story filed by Maureen Yiga, News Tonight.